So I was sitting here enjoying my newly repaired recliner sofa when I heard this. That is the sound of a leaking toilet. It happens when the flapper inside the toilet tank uh, becomes old or damaged. The leak is slow, so you might go 20 to 40 minutes without hearing anything, and then you will hear that noise. That's because the water in the tank has gotten below a certain level, triggering the tank's mechanism to refill, and that's what you're hearing, the refilling of the toilet. The good news is that fixing this toilet flapper situation is something that even I can do. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn the water supply off. That is uh, down below the toilet and you're gonna to turn to the right. Remove the lid from the toilet and give it a flush. That will drain the majority of the water from the tank and since the water is off, it won't refill. Reach down into the toilet and remove the old defective flapper. It should be connected in two places. It might be wrapped around a prong or it might just pull off depending on the make and model of flapper you currently have. Next, disconnect the chain from the flushing arm and pull everything out of the toilet. Take a look at the old flapper. You'll notice that there may be wear and tear just due to age. There may also be hard water deposits that contribute to a slow leak. Next, you'll want to find out the model of your current toilet. Uh, most of them have it uh, underneath the rim here. If you look underneath, this one's a 21-186. Once you have your part number, you can go to the manufacturer's website, in this case Gerber, and search for the proper part replacement. In this case, it was the 99-788, which you can purchase on the manufacturer's site, or you can click on my Amazon affiliate link below and buy it straight from Amazon.com. You can buy a universal flapper replacement. The one that I removed from this toilet was a Corky. It worked fine. Make sure you buy the right size. This one is three inches, and you measure that by the diameter of the large ball in the center of the flapper. Due to the extraordinarily large number of toilets in this house, I bought a five pack straight from Gerber. You might notice some subtle differences between the two models. The chain may be different and you'll notice how the flapper connects is slightly different. Okay, we're ready to seat the new flapper into the toilet. Notice that this one has holes that you're gonna have to wrap around the prongs down below inside the toilet, which we'll see in a moment. Take each side and wrap it around that little prong until it's snugly in place. Once that one's fully in place, just repeat this on the other side. This next step may require a little bit of trial and error, but what we want to do is to connect the chain that comes up from the flapper to the flushing arm. There needs to be sufficient slack in the chain so that the flapper rests completely over the opening, but also so that when you flush the arm, it lifts it. As you can see in this example, there was too much slack. You'll need to readjust the amount of slack in the chain until you have sufficient slack to allow the flapper to rest over the hole, but also to lift up once you flush the toilet. Here's a little bonus tip. Sometimes it can be difficult to hook the chain onto the flushing arm. Uh, a needle nose pliers can help bend in the hook so that it's easier to attach and detach. Once you're satisfied with the placement of your chain, go ahead and turn the water back on, this time by turning the knob to the left. Wow, take a look at that water flowing in. Once the water has refilled the tank, go ahead and give the toilet a test flush to see if everything is working correctly. If the chain was too loose, it may not adequately pull up the flapper. Water won't therefore exit the tank. You'll need to adjust it as in the example here. Once you've made your final adjustments, if they were needed, do one last flush, confirm that the tank uh, empties and refills. You're ready to put the lid back on. Take a look at the lid and you'll see that uh, 
there's probably some indicator that one side is the front and one side is the back. This one has some notches that go towards the back. Drop that on there and you are finished.